Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to be about DNA, and we're going to attempt to answer three questions. How it is built, what it does, and how it is regulated. Uh, the first thing we're going to study is how it is actually built, which is DNA's structure. Now, DNA is a chemical found in all living things. It's just a chemical, and scientists did not know initially that DNA was in fact the chemical that stores genetic information. Uh, the first thing they figured out, though, is that DNA is actually built from only four monomers called nucleotides. And each of these monomers is made up of three parts. And here's a pretty clear picture of that. We've got a five-carbon sugar, okay, and in the case of DNA, the five-carbon sugar is deoxyribose. You should recognize that it's a carbohydrate because it ends in the OSC spelling. Okay, it's got a nitrogen base attached, okay, to the sugar, and also attached to the sugar is a phosphate group. So these three things make up the parts of a DNA nucleotide. So the whole thing is called a nucleotide. And if you want to look at it in a more of a chemical structure, here it is. Now there are four different nitrogen bases that are used to make DNA nucleotides. Okay, they come in two categories. The larger ones are called purines. Okay, and purines are adenine and guanine. Uh, they differ slightly in the structure of the nitrogen bases. Uh, pyrimidines, on the other hand, are a little bit smaller. They have just a one single loop structure here, and those are cytosine and thymine. So, I remember the purines as being slightly larger because their word, purine, is slightly shorter than pyrimidine. And I remember pyrimidines, it's the opposite. They're a little bit bigger, but they have, uh, excuse me, they're a little bit smaller, but they have the larger spelling, the longer word. That helps you remember it all. All right. Now, DNA nucleotides are bonded together into strands by covalent bonds. And this is how the actual genetic code is stored. We know that now. So you, what you do is you hook purine okay, to pyrimidine. All right. And notice that the phosphate group okay, up here has an ability to form a bond, and that's called the 5' prime end. And the sugar... The deoxyribose has an opening for a bond down here, and that's called the 3' prime end. The way I remember that is 5-phosphate. So the 5' prime end is the phosphate end. And they're hooked together always by bonding to the bottom of the sugar or to the 3' prime end. So you can attach to this end down here, but you can't attach to this end. We'll talk more about that later. Okay. Each nucleotide is added to the open 3' prime end by forming a covalent bond by way of a dehydration synthesis. And note that the strand cannot be elongated by adding to the 5' prime end. Okay, so when you build a strand of DNA, you can only build by adding to the open bond on the deoxyribose. You can't add to this end. This end is, is kind of like, you think of it as being sealed shut. Okay, you get the idea? So you can only build in one direction. Now, because DNA is a relatively simple molecule compared to proteins, scientists initially believed that proteins, not DNA, stored genetic code because the nucleus is filled with basically two chemicals, DNA and protein. And when scientists figured out that the nucleus is critical for cell division, they hypothesized that there must be something in the nucleus that is um, making cell replication possible and that it's storing the information to do this. Uh, they had two choices, proteins or DNA. Um, DNA initially didn't seem like a good candidate. As you remember, DNA is only made from four different polymers, excuse me, four different monomers, uh, or four nucleotides are used to build it. And scientists were wondered, how can only four letters be used to encode complex genetic data? Whereas proteins are built from 20 different amino acids, there's lots of different ways you can arrange 20 different amino acids. Their structure is much more complicated. So it made a lot more sense that um, the genetic code was written using an alphabet of 20 different letters, which were amino acids. So this started a race. Okay? Scientists were trying to figure out in the early 1900s what exactly is used to build the code of life. Is it a protein or is it DNA? And the work of a bunch of different scientists working at uh, several different labs finally settled this question in 1953. Okay, thanks for listening. We will pick up with the next video cast talking about the history 
uh, the history of the research that went into figuring out that DNA is in fact the genetic molecule.